Hello and welcome to Green Hill Garage. In today's video, we're going to be doing uh, some repairs on this 2000 Polaris 500 Sportsman 6x6. Uh, got cat. I got kitty cat. So, this vehicle, I bought this probably, I'd like to say three years ago. Kind of forgotten, but had a winch. Uh, I picked it up for two grand. Um, winch has worked. Everything's worked except for the front wheel drive. Uh, I'm not sure what's gone on with the electronic locker, but that's what we're going to be doing in part of today's video. Uh, also, the bushings here on the A-arm. A-arm bushings. We're going to be doing new bushings. I got some Delrin ones instead of bronze. We're going to see how they work. Um, also, another thing I wanted to show you, if you've already seen our tire video, then you'll have seen how we got these off. But in case you didn't, uh, basically we have four lugs here. It's a four on four bolt pattern, I believe. But then we had a couple of lugs that broke, so we couldn't get them off with the hub. So what we did is we just took this dust cover off, took the cotter pin bolt. It's a one and one eighths socket to get that bolt off. Uh, but yeah, we just took everything, the whole hub, and just went ahead and slid the whole hub off to get around that problem. Uh, so we've got two of the tires mounted. We've got two more here. We're doing Ken the Bear Claws. Hello, Joshua. Uh, we're going to be cleaning up and painting these rims later. They're actually not hard. Since we're going to be painting these rims black, then a lot of masking isn't really hard on these uh, tires and whatnot. So just a little bit about that. We're going to be swapping out front tires, but the tires for the fronts haven't arrived in the mail yet. But they're the same tread pattern as these guys. Um, other than that, oh, I guess we're going to be sipping, or, uh, switching out grips. And then we're going to get the uh, um, odometer to work. It hasn't worked the whole time I've owned it. I think it's something to do with just electrical connection. So we'll get that to work. And we'll get started into the work right now. So the first thing we're going to do in this project is tension up the chains. Um, basically, as you can see, we've got plenty of tension on these chains, maybe even a little too much. So we're going to have to probably back off that one. But we've got a lot of tension, or, well, no tension. We've got a lot of slack here. So what you're going to do to tie, or loosen that is we're going to go ahead, loosen up these bolts here. There's another pair just on this other side. We're gonna loosen up them. Oh, hello, dog. Yes. And then we're gonna go ahead, pop out the bolts here. And there's one more on the other side. Yeah, here we go. So we got our other set of bolts here. And then the brake caliper, I believe there's something we have to loosen on that too. Oh, yeah, here we go. There's bolts right there on the brake caliper. Everything has to come loose and it's I believe it's 5 8 inch bolts with an 11 16 inch nut. So we'll go ahead and get started and I'll set you guys at the time lapse. Okay, so we got it all tensioned. Um, I'm not, you probably couldn't tell, but I realized I'd forgotten to mention some bolts, or these little guys here on the brake caliper. They're actually half inch, they're not big, but I was right, these are a 5 8 inch bolt head on the bolt, and then 11 16 inch nut. Um, so we got that all tensioned up. It calls for under compression, see, we don't have it on the wheels, so under compression like it is, uh, it's supposed to be like about an inch or so of free play. And then uh, when it sits on the ground, it should be about three-eighths, which seems a little tight to me, but I tend to run a little on more on the loose side. Uh, it never seems to hurt. 
about half to five eighths of an inch of free play it's uh, three eighths um so we're gonna go ahead now uh i'm gonna go and get those tires mounted we'll get those on but first we'll go ahead we'll get our new grips on we got our where are they here they are okay so we got our new grips we're gonna mount uh these are really good um i think i've bought this brand before but they're really cushy and they're gonna be much better than these old dried out rotted ones we have uh getting these off is really easy i'll just go ahead i just have a swiss army knife and there it goes <sighs> It's a little hard to get one hand okay so you just gonna go ahead run your knife down it like so try to find your cut again go down it again and they should just peel off we need to cut a little more up the top And just like that, it'll come off. We'll go do the same thing on the other side over here. And this guy, he's a little further out. So we can just cut right up against. And this one still has the end on it, so. Let's see. We actually might be able to just cut that end off. Helps to have a really sharp knife. And just kind of work it off. And it comes off just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some cleaner. We'll get these cleaned up and I'll show you when we slide these on. Okay, so to clean off these handlebar grips, I like to just get a hold of some carburetor cleaner. Um, now you might be asking yourself, why do you like carburetor cleaner so much? I use it in a lot of my videos. Um, basically, carburetor cleaner, it's, uh, it's a little less harsh than brake cleaner. But it does a really good job at eating off stuff like glue, rubber, carbon. So I'll just go ahead, wipe it off. Remember just to use the rag, not your hand. Carburetor cleaner is fairly toxic. You don't want to get that on your skin if you can avoid it. And just wipe it down you want to be sure it's really clean for the next step and looks like we're good there I already cleaned up the other side so we're gonna go ahead and put on the handlebar grips now we're ready to go ahead and put on our grips so you could do this with several different solvents or uh, glues but we're gonna go ahead uh, they went ahead and they have grip glue in I've gotten away with dish soap. Uh, if you don't realize, dish soap, it does dry and it dries on sticky if you use Dawn or whatnot. I don't know about the organic dish soap, so it's weird and other types of dish soaps. But um, yeah, so Dawn works really well. Uh, hairspray works well if you have some. I don't have any. So we're going to go ahead and uh, lay on this and we'll see if we can squeeze on this grip. Let's see, we probably have to punch that little foil out let's see if I got a pin here here I'll set you guys okay sorry about that anyway got that punched open I didn't realize I had a little foil we're just gonna go ahead lay on a little bit So we're going to need something to spread it out here. Let's see, what have I got? I'll just grab a knife blade. This stuff, I bet you it's just like rubber cement. Okay, so now go ahead and set that aside. We'll take our grip. Um, looks like we want to face it down. So we'll see. 
we can get that. I might have to lay some of that grip glue inside of the grip. Let's try it this way first. Uh, let me see. Okay, so got it started. We're just going to go ahead, twist it back and forth. Hopefully we can get it on in time. stuff sticky well that didn't really work so we're just gonna go back to the tried and true method instead of trying the new glue we'll just go ahead and use my old dish soap uh, so far I've had really good luck with this stuff uh, my brother one time thought he could use motor oil and uh, the grips never did settle down they just kind of slipped on there for a long time so we'll go ahead lay that on there real good and since it's dish soap it's non-toxic you can just wash it right off go ahead and lube up the inside of this well it's gonna be so much easier i can't even tell you guys Okay, let's go ahead and be sure that cushion is right along in there. I think this sits up. Maybe it sits. Yeah, that would make sense. Because then your hands are running into that. So that's how they, that's how they're supposed to sit. Okay, and there you have it. Got our grip in. Feels pretty good so far. We won't know until we let it dry. It'll take about three or four hours I should say is what it usually has taken me in the past so we'll get started now I'm gonna go ahead and get those other tires mounted Man, those tires sure do look great. Uh, got them all mounted, and uh, we're going to clean them up and paint them. But I just wanted to throw them on, see what they look like on the 6x6. They're going to be sweet. So next step, I guess, is going to be uh, tearing down the front. So in order to do this, I'm going to need to get some blocks under here so I can get my jack over here. And uh, we'll unbolt these fronts, and we're going to find out what exactly is up with the electronic lock system. As far as I know, it's just one wire feeds 12 volts of power to a magnet, if I understand it correctly. So we're going to go ahead and start pulling that and see what we find.
All right, so I pulled the pin on the uh, A-arm, and what I found is that it's actually bent. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's bent. So I'm going to see if I can't heat it up and bend it back. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is clean out this tube. tube doesn't look bad at all, so I'll clean it out and get ready to put in new bushings. Um, when I pulled the little, uh, it's basically like a magnetic ratchet, if you really want to think of it that way. But I went ahead and pulled that, and everything looked fine there. So I repacked the bearings with some uh, marine grease. I like using marine grease just in case water ever does get in there. It won't completely ruin the bearings. Uh, I Usually these things don't get water in, but if they ever do, it's nice to know that it'll work. Plus that uh, marine grease was meant for trailer wheel bearings, so it works just fine in the ATVs. So I'll get to work on cleaning these A-arms out, and we'll set you guys back to time lapse. One thing I forgot to mention uh, while I was doing the uh, explanation on our last work was that we're not going to be using this tire uh, or any of these front rims for matter. Uh, we got another ATV, another Polaris, so what we're going to do is take the other rims and then when those new tires come, they're the same tread pattern as these. We want to get all six to match and I couldn't find, these are old bear claws, I don't know what year, someone who probably knows the dot numbers uh, maybe they're not as old as I think they are but anyway I got this off of a trade so um, I'm just gonna use it on a different ATV project where uh, matching tires don't matter as much and then uh, we'll just take the other rims which are identical rims we'll clean up and paint those so we'll set you guys the time lapse Okay, so I just realized my battery died on me during filming of that other side. Um, I just had it on uh, uh, time lapse, so it wasn't like we lost a gob. But uh, basically, I went and pulled this side. Uh, it's two bolts, one on each, uh, right there, nine sixteenths heads, and the bar. I think this thing has been in a wreck. In fact, I know it's been in a wreck just because of the uh, bends and the tubing done match up with what should be there um these bushings are completely shot Let's see if i got one here it is this is all that was left the other side was completely gone and as you can see i put the new ones in on this side this is kind of what they're supposed to look like with just one bushing on the rear um but yeah they were completely gone on that other one um what was i gonna show you guys oh uh this blade so this whole frame at some point either fractured or bent you can see the weld there and so this must have been way before me they took i believe it's a brush hog blade 
big old mower blade and welded that in there. Which I guess it works because I've never had an issue with this 6x6. Six six. Uh, it tracks perfectly straight. But another thing I was going to show you was this bar here. Let me go ahead. I don't know if you can see that weird wear pattern. Uh, we got a weird wear pattern, and then on top of it, it's all bent. So I'm going to put it in the vise here, heat it up, and see if I can bend it back. And then we'll go ahead and slap in the new bushings. I popped open our speedometer and tachometer. Uh, can't find anything visibly wrong. I've checked the ohms on it. Everything seems to be fine. Um, also, I replaced the light bulb. So now we have light. Uh, so that was good. Grips are about dried out. Uh, they're coming together nicely. Cat's completely sacked out. And then we got our tires over here. It's the only way we've been able to find to dry them in this temperature. So we'll go ahead and let them bake on. Brother here, he just got it all washed. Um, so he's going to go ahead. We'll wait for these to dry. And we'll clean and lightly sand them. And they'll get ready to paint. Uh, yeah, we just got the thing sitting on the ground right now. Because we're trying to pull that other side. So we'll get the uh, bar bent back. And then I'll get those bushings in. And we'll go to when I get the bushings in. Okay, so we got our bushings in. Which was kind of a pain in the butt. You wouldn't think it would be, but it was. Delrin bushings. They didn't want to go in. I think it's because this bar has actually got a slight bend to it in the A-arm. Uh, whenever this vehicle took an impact, it bent something in there. So I had to kind of fight with it to get it to bend into shape. But we got all our wheels painted. We're currently waiting on the other two to dry, but we got these in. They look pretty sweet. I'm really happy with how they turned out. We're gonna be doing our front wheels next, but we're gonna call it a night and get back at it again in the morning. All right, so it's the next day. Uh, we got our tires on. They sat by the wood stove here in the shop and cured overnight. Paint's all dried and they look great. Uh, we got them mounted onto the back end and they look pretty good. Got all the bushings done yesterday as you saw. Um, so today we're just going to be working on getting this tachometer to work. I'm not exactly sure why it's not why it's not turning on when the key turns on but we're going to try to figure that out. Uh, we're also going to try to get our 6x6 to work. Uh, the front wheels are not engaging for some reason. Well, they they engage erratically, I should say. But I checked both hubs. Nothing's wrong there. So it's something to do with either the switch or the wiring from the switch to the actual um, to the actual front wheels. Hello, Joshua. So we're not going to be reusing this one. Uh, this is a nice tire and wheel, but I could not find a matching one at the moment. Uh, well, actually, let's see. No, I did find a matching one, but it was like 80 bucks for the matching one or 120 for tires that match these rears. So I went ahead and matched it because we've got another ATV. It's a uh, 93 Polaris Trail Boss, and it has the uh, exact same rims. It even has the same hub, so we might have to steal some parts off there. But we're going to go ahead and clean up these rims. These tires, they're the original tires, actually. Um, but we're going to go ahead, clean up, sand down, wire wheel these rims, these tires are toast, so we're going to go ahead, our tires are in the mail, they should get here tomorrow, and then we'll be able to swap out and paint and put the new tires on, and hopefully by then, we will have our 6x6, six six, uh, electronics done. So, we'll get to work on that, and let's see what we can do. Okay guys, our tires finally came. It is Monday and uh, this morning FedEx showed up with our tires. So we'll go ahead and mount them. We got our rims painted a day ago and got them all cleaned up and painted. Uh, we, as you can see, we'll probably need some touch-ups. There's looks like bubbling there. We can clean that up. Uh, also went ahead 
we had our racks i forgot to show you guys these earlier we went ahead and oiled them up they look really nice now they're not going to rot anymore it gives us atv kind of a rustic look on top on top of the uh, really cool rims and tires so we'll go ahead and we'll get these tires mounted all right guys we got the tires on it's the evening i've been uh doing uh welding on the video uh for sorry i've been welding in the video uh for the kawasaki mule most of today so just this evening we were able to get the tires on and it's all together got the bushings in uh we still can't get our tachometer to work to work but i'm not really super desperate to get it to work um we'll try it again later but for now we got everything going i believe we got our six wheel drive fixed uh basically the issue was right here at this connection uh this little it's got a little brass spring inside a uh, little brass slider on a brass spring and it all gotten corroded in there so i don't think it was actually able to gain power to the wheels so that was the reason for that got that all set grips have dried feel great we also got this rack this came with it uh we use it every now and again but we finally got some oil out and dressed it up real nice so got our kenda bear claw ex's all six corners well all six tires and next step i guess will be we're gonna go ahead clean it up uh, paint these uh racks here but first it's been about four days we are gonna go ahead and take it for a test drive all right guys so it's the last section of the six by six build uh we're gonna go ahead take it for a spin uh before we did i just wanted to kind of summarize what we did uh so basically we put tires on it we got the front bushings fixed um we got the we couldn't ever get the odometer electrical to work uh, i'm still working on that that's the last thing that needs done on this but we got four or six wheel drive to work so everything's done we also went ahead and uh, oiled up the racks on it. It came with the racks. Uh, we're gonna be selling this six by six. So, and since I knew we we're gonna be selling it and I couldn't leave well enough alone, went ahead and got another one. So we're gonna be fixing up this other six by six, getting it running, cause it does not currently run. But we're gonna go ahead, me and Trey are gonna go take this out and go take it for a spin out on the track. All right guys, we're out here at our track. Uh, we're out here. We got the dogs with us, so we'll take it a little slower uh, This one here a little spotted hyena He's he's kind of a car chaser and a ATV chaser, so we'll take it easy um, Went ahead and took the racks off. We're just gonna do a couple of gentle laps on this uh, I'm not expecting anything great probably around 16 seconds. We've got our 135 yard oval we reset the uh, finish line back to in between those two stock tanks i think times here were really suffering when they were right here in the turn because as you come to the turn you have to hit the brake so you're slowing down we'll see if it changes the time maybe maybe not but i'll throw my helmet on and we'll see what we're doing try going the other way uh, just to kind of see we put in those new bushings so the suspension feels really good uh, with six wheels and those brand new tires though we're grabbing 
pretty darn well. The, t the rear end doesn't really drift, it just kind of grabs. So, uh, I don't know what kind of time we put down, but we'll go in the other direction and see if there's any difference. actually seems more planted to the left. Uh, maybe it's just me, but it felt a little more planted going to the left. Um, what I do want to know, or want you guys to know, is that, believe it or not, as fast as it looks in the straightaway, this thing isn't even really trying. Uh, there's just a gobble of power here, and it's really too much for as small a track as this is. If we had berm, it'd be really interesting to see what this could do. Uh, the chain drive, really saves on weight and allows that power to get to these wheels with minimal uh, parasitic loss. So I really love, just love chain drives for racing. But I think we're gonna wrap it up here. This is pretty much the final video for the entire build of this 6x6. Thank you all for watching. Uh, it's really been fun. We're just gonna clean this up and get ready to sell it. We may use it here for a little while. It could be a little bit before we actually get it listed. Uh, but we're going to go ahead, clean it all up, and we're going to sell it. So thank you all for watching again. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. Also, as I mentioned earlier, we've got that other 6x6 we're going to be picking up. And the Kawasaki Mule Hood video should already be posted if this video is posted. So thank you all for watching, and you all have a great day.